Hello, everybody. This is uh, MoveEasy Yoga. And uh, today we're going to focus on movements that uh, will help you address lower back pain. Today's date is April 20th, 2021. We're going to start in the regular fashion, just lying on your back. You can, could put your legs up on a box or a chair or a couch. Otherwise, knees bent, feet flat, flat on the floor, just watching your breath, not trying to change it, not trying to change anything, really. See if you can feel your body getting excited or getting grateful that you came today. Notice that your breath is supporting you, there around you, and the floor and earth underneath you. and take a couple more breaths. And then let's move on to vagus nerve reset. You can bring your hands behind your head, stack your hands interlace or interlace your fingers. You could put a, a, a set of therapy balls under your head. Whatever you do, you're not gonna move anything but, but your eyeballs. So shifting your eyeballs to the right and waiting or an involuntary sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Coming back to center, shifting your eyeballs to the left and waiting for a sigh, swallow, yawn, or gulp. Come back to center, do this two more times. Right, left, right, left, without my cues.
And then let's start the breath work, the specific breath work. Let's do rib cage breathing. And before we start, just go ahead and make your hands into little claws and then um, poke underneath the rib cage, the bottom of the rib cage on both sides, or you can alternate if you want. But what you're trying to do is actually unstick the diaphragm that sometimes get very sticky. And this will help with your rib cage breath that we're gonna do in a minute. So just poking around um, uh, underneath the rib cage from the outside to the inside to the middle. And breathing. And then go ahead and put your hands uh, around your rib cage with your thumbs down and your fingers up towards uh, the top of the, the, the belly button. And uh, on an inhale, just a, an inhale that expands, you should be able to feel the expansion side to side. And also be sure you're expanding also from back to front. And exhale, it all comes back together. And then inhale again, the rib cage expands. You should feel an expansion also back to front or front to back. And then just exhale, just rib cage breathing. And keep going for about four more breaths. One more. And next, oh, I, I did these backwards, but next we're gonna do head ramping. Just bring your hands behind your head or put your, put a therapy ball underneath your head. Whichever one you do, Push the back of the skull into the floor. And the chin drops a little, the, the back of the skull actually moves away from the shoulders. And stay here for a little while. A couple breaths and then release. And repeat this. Let's do this five more times. Head ramping. And one more or finish up. Now we're going to do um, hypopresses. Let's do uh, let's let's do the um, hands and knees hypopressive, the proning hypopressive. Starting on hands and knees. Remember to put some more padding under your knees if you need to. And then drop to your elbows. The hands are together, you make sort of a little triangle. And then 
Just staying here. Notice how long Kathy's back is. If you're, if you're rounding your back, just uh, take your hips and knees back a little farther away from your shoulders and you'll get a longer back. We're gonna do three breaths and then no breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, all the way out. At the end of this exhale, hold your breath out, no breath. Hold your breath out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, stay as long as you can, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And just let that all out. Come drop back into a little child's pose just to rest. We're gonna do two more of these. So when you hold your breath out, imagine that you are taking a breath, but you're doing it without any breath. And so that will actually widen the rib cage. The rib cage will start to spread when you do that. Try to keep your belly soft. So not, not, you're not holding there. It's in the rib cage you're expanding. So come on up back again to the proning position. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Last breath, inhale, exhale, all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. And go ahead and inhale and exhale and come back into a little child's pose. Carol uh, Harding uh, sends her <laughs> affection she said she's watching, counting shoreboard, shorebirds this morning in Homer, Alaska, and can't come to class. <clears throat> Remember, when you're in a child's pose, you could put a, a sponge ball at your belly, and it might actually help you in many aspects of that pose. Come on back, last one, last hypopressive. Make your back long. Now take, an, um, take a breath, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath, inhale, and exhale all the way out. Hold your breath out, no breath. Belly soft, no breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 12, 13, 14, 15. Inhale and exhale and just come back into a child's pose. So I, th I think I said this class is all about um, every single movement that we do from here on out is something that will help you or may help you because there's so many different sources of lower back pain, but may help you with some of the issues you have with instability or um, pain in your lower back. Uh, I want you to get 
the first thing we're going to do is what's called static back. And we're going to be here for five minutes. And I'd like you to put your, it's a supine pose, similar to what we start with, except you're going to put your bent knees up on a couch or a chair or a box. I'm going to put mine up, my, myself up on a, on a plyo box. I don't think anyone else has one of those. So if you have lower back, you know, um, acute lower back pain someday, I would recommend that you start treating yourself this way. And you could spend a lot of time here, actually. Just lying on your back, you might want to put something under your head. I'm going to time us for five minutes. And just breathing. There's nothing to do here but allow the body and the lower back to start to heal itself. I actually recommend this for the, your end of, for your yoga nidra pose practice too. You wanna get your knees in 90 degrees and your butt, your hips at 90 degrees, but if it's uncomfortable, you have to find, you may have to slide a little bit away, your hips a little bit away from the box. Two more minutes.
Okay, uh, stay here. We're gonna stay here and, and do some directions of movement of the pelvis and you can stay right here with your uh, knees up on a chair. And before I do that, I wanna say that lower back issues are often the result of the lumbar spine overworking because the thoracic spine is tight uh, or immobile and the hips are tight or immobile. So there's a, a, a theory called the, of movement called the joint, joint by joint theory. And it means that e each joint has its own um, need either for mobility or stability and the lumbar spine needs to be stable. But often it's mobile because it's trying to make up for the, uh, for the um, tightness and the lack of movement or mobility in the, either the hips or the upper back. So we're going to try to address some of those things today. The first thing we're going to do, you can pull your um, hips a little bit away from the, from the chair. And I want, we're going to do the six directions of movement for, for the um, pelvis. So you're going to, you're going to get in touch with the, your pelvis. Um, the first two movements, there's, there's, so there's six of them. The first two movements are in anterior and posterior tilt. You don't have to remember which is which, but just know that you're going to drop your tailbone um, down toward the floor, and then you're going to lift it up, move it up towards your belly button. So the, the pelvis is tilting one direction and then the other. And just do it slowly, get to know what this movement is. Posterior tilt, anterior tilt. And the, the tilting is also happens, it happens at the pubic bone, but it also happens at the top of the pelvis, at, at the waist. And when the, pel the pubic bone is going towards the floor, that is an anterior tilt. And when the, pu the pubic bone is going away towards the belly button and the spine flattens, that is uh, anterior. And like I say, you don't really have to know that. Just get acquainted with these two movements and know that there's a neutral position in between the two extremes. But try to find the two extremes and then uh, after a couple more of those movements, then try to find a neutral position, neutral pelvis, something halfway in between. There will be a little space underneath the lumbar. The next two directions are um, side to side, a side to side movement. You might want to put your hands on the ASIS, which is that little bony mark in front of the pelvis, but to the outside front. And then first drop the pelvis, the right pelvis to the floor, and then come back to center and drop the left pelvis. So it's a side to side movement. And try to keep it, have it straight across. So it's not yet a, a hip hike is the next movement we're gonna do, but you wanna keep this even. It just is, it crosses over. So these are the, this, these movements come in pairs. This is the second pair. It's a, it's a, a rotation of the pelvis. Keep breathing, become familiar with this movement. Finish up. Come back to neutral. Remember there's a neutral between the, between the movements. The next one, you're gonna put your thumb on the top of your uh, pelvis at the waist, at the side of the waist. You can feel there's a bony mark, that's the top, top of the pelvis. And now you're gonna lift so the 
the top of the pelvis on the right moves towards the armpit. The, obviously, the other piece of the, the other side of the pelvis, pelvis moves away from the armpit, the, uh, the, other, the other armpit. So just keep going. These are called hip hikes sometimes. Just an, an up and down movement. Moving the, the, the top of the pelvis towards the armpit. Back and forth you go. And do two more sets. And then come back to neutral. And just stay there for a minute and breathe and see if you if you feel any more space or any more alignment, evenness in the pelvis. There's no right or wrong answer, just just being curious about how it feels now. And then you're gonna stay here, but you're gonna kick your box away or your, your chair away, remove your chair, but stay here in a supine position for the next movement. We're gonna work on the internal rotation of the hip. So knees bent, Lying on your back. And then drop your right knee into the, toward, toward, toward the other knee, actually. Drop your right knee. Towards drop your right knee to the inside. Oh, I see. Toward the other knee, towards the inside. Put your uh, left foot on top of the right knee. And just try, you're trying to stretch the quad and um, internally rotate the, uh, the right hip. And just stay here and breathe. We, we actually do something that, like this with resistance sometimes, but this, we're not gonna resist now. We're just gonna allow the weight of your top, your left foot to, to stretch the quad on the right leg and, and internally rotate the hip. Your, your right hip probably lift off the floor. And then you can, I want you to do four of these uh, staying on the same side. So just lifting your right knee up and then dropping it down again. This is number two. But do them and with a hold. So once you come down, hold for three or four counts. So you get a really nice stretch and a really nice internal hip rotation. Number three. Back up, number four. Let's do one more. <laughs> and then switch sides. The left knee drops to the center to the and then the right foot on top of the left knee just to X accentuate, accelerate the stretch and the rotation actually. And number two. Okay. 
mop. Number three, take your time, feel what's happening here. Come up. Four. And five. Did we do five or six last time, Kathy? Six. Oh, so we have one more then. <laughs> Come on up, last one. And finish up. Slowly bring yourself up to a floor seated position. We're gonna continue that. We're gonna do a, another version of that right now. Put your knees in front of you. And put your hands behind you to hold, to hold yourself standing up. Spread your knees a little bit apart and then drop your right knee to the inside. And then drop your left knee to the inside. So this is, yeah. Oh, 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 okay. This is harder. This is harder than the other one, but it's the same thing. Back and forth you go. So one at a time, Kathy, not both. One at a time. There, then come on up, and then the other one. That's easier. Yeah, no, I didn't want you to do both at the same time. I'm sorry if that's the impression I left <laughs> with you. So if this is hard for you, too hard to do, then just go back to the one we did before. Lie on your back and, um, and internally rotate your hip. I have a little, a little uh, tension or something on my left hip when, it go, when my knee goes all the way to the floor. So your arms are holding you up. Yeah, you're sitting back behind your hips. And then just alternating, dropping one knee to the floor and then the other. And just go ahead and finish up whatever set you're on. Right and then left, hopefully right and left. And then come on up. Let me see what I have on my list here. And we're going to do um, pelvic floor. We're going to do put. We're going to do a pelvic floor um, work release with sponge ball. So I showed you guys this before class last last time. You're just going to put your sponge ball. Don't put the little pokey part uh, under uh, by your pelvis. You're going to put the ball. Uh, sit on the ball. Basically, sit on the ball with your knees dropped. In a um, in a actually more of a cross-legged position. I think that you have to have your knees wide for this to work. So as cross-legged as you can get. And now just sitting tall and taking a breath. And when you take your inhale, squeeze the uh, pelvic floor and, and as if you're sucking the ball up into your pelvis. And then hold for a little while and hold the contraction and then just release. So we're gonna do, let's do six more of these. So each time on your inhale, you're actually going to act as if, behave as if, think as if you're pulling the ball up into your pelvic floor as much as you can. Hold for a couple breaths. And then release. 
We're working the same area as hypopressives, actually, but a different, different tool. Sit tall. I think this is number four. Do one more. Come off the ball or stay on it <laughs> for the next one. This is just a cross-legged hip circles. I've been doing this since I started going to yoga classes uh, in, in Torrance anyway, one of my teachers actually. This is her favorite. She always started with this. Put your hands on your knees, sit up tall, and then uh, drop your chest towards the right side, towards your right knee, forward towards your right knee. Keep an open chest and then swing around toward, all the way to the front. Uh, so you're leaning forward. It's, it's a really a, um, well, how can I tell you this? It's really a hip hinge. So you're hip hinging to the side, coming all the way forward bending at the hip and then coming around and then coming back. So I think I'm going to, I don't know what, whether I'm going to do a better job of this thing. I'm going to um, add spotlight, replace spotlight. Okay, whoops, now I have to figure out how, how to um, have you see me. So here I'm, I'm sitting on my ball. I just like sitting on the ball, but you don't have to be on the ball, but you could be on a blanket. So all you're gonna do is be here, sit up tall, and then rotate all the way towards the side as far as you can, and then bring yourself forward. And this is sort of an awkward picture, but then, and then bring, it, bring yourself back up. And then you do it the other way. So come down, left knee, then bring it all the way across. Keep your chest open and bring yourself up to seated. Got it? Yeah. Okay, keep going. The idea is get down as far as you can without rounding your back. So that's why I say this is a hip hinge. And I think, um, you got, you, sometimes people ask me why I'm so, how I'm so flexible in my hips. Well, I used to attend a class, Simone Marquet. She was a, one of my early teachers and after, after I'd become a yoga teacher actually. And she, all, this was her opening move. And so I'm thinking maybe this is the reason my hips are so flexible. <laughs> I can see why. Yeah. Yeah, she also did every month, she did a, a hips focused workshop that I went to. Every move was focused on hips. Was she also on a ball like you are? No, she was not. Let's see if it's any different on the ball. It is a little, it feels different on the ball actually. And off the ball. Yeah, I like it off the ball. Now that I'm off the ball, I like being off the ball. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a little bit more stretch. Yeah, that's what happens is that there's a, you, your, your back gets a little longer. Let's do a couple more sets.
And now let's do a side bend. Come on up, you know this one. Side bending, I'm gonna time it. This is bone building pose. This is a lots of things pose. This, yeah, I shouldn't have to cue this one because you do it so often. And one of the things about this is it's working on the side body. We're gonna do some other things work. We're gonna do some plank poses, plank-like poses on the side. Because this, um, the QL at the waist, now I've talked so long, I didn't tell you to do bring your elbow forward. So bring your elbow forward and create another stretch. But um, one of the things that working on the side body is very helpful for lower back. Bring your elbow up. Bring your torso up, other side. Bring top arms up and over. Keep your hips on the floor. Breathe. You can try to think of pushing back a little bit to create more of a curve to go ahead and bring your elbow forward. Oh, maybe we'll do it again and I'll try to explain that. Elbow forward, find another kind of stretch. Now bring your elbow up, now bring your torso up. So when I say find a curve, I, what I'm saying is as you bend over, try to think of uh, s compressing on the, so you're, you're bending over on the right side, compressing on the right side and poking back a little bit, coming, bringing your other side of your waist back a little bit. So it's more of a C curve. So, you, you, so that's, that's what I'm trying to say. Just breathing. Bring your elbow forward. Come on back, elbow up first and then torso. Last side, left arm slides along the mat, right arm up and over. Remember, so you're compressing on the left, you're kind of create, trying to create a C, you might try to come back a little bit away so that you get more of a C curve on the right. And actually when you do that, you should feel more compression on the left, at least I do. Go ahead and bring your elbow forward, top elbow forward. And come on up, elbow first. Where did I put my pen? Why don't you take a, take a break? I'm gonna go find a pen. I have to write something down. Where did I put it? Okay. So I can see that what I wanna do here is, a, is more of a workshop than an hour class. <laughs> So we've got to, we got to that point. What I really wanna do next 
is some a sideline hip hinge. Um, so we didn't, we didn't, we're gonna, not going to do a few variations. Uh, we'll, we're going to try this for so. This is the side, your side line, you're resting on your elbow, your knees are slightly bent. This is the QL work that I was telling you about uh, that actually connects to the side bend, which is perfect. Um, Okay, so you're, you're lying, Kathy's doing it good. She's lying on her, she, you, you wanna lie, be sure you're lying, your spine is aligned. And all you're gonna do from here is just lift up your hips, off, uh, lift up your hips, your entire, off the floor. And if you want to, you can lift up your top leg, but you don't have to. But you're gonna lift it up and then bring your pelvis a little forward. So thrust forward, lift up. And you're going to stay here, not for very long, because you won't be able to stay here for very long. Let's say 10. Remember, you can lift your, your top leg up, too, if you want to. What you're doing, and then you're thrusting forward a little bit and feeling both sides of your waist. Did you like that, Kathy? You loved it, right? Challenging. Challenging. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'll, I'll get. So, so line it up, line up everything, you guys. The knees are slightly bent. Everything's stacked. And all you're going to do is lift up, lift your hips up and bring your pelvis forward. If you'd like to add the lifted top leg, you can, but you don't have to. If you can only stay for a few seconds, do that. I just put a sponge ball under my hip. I would be able to do it, otherwise, no way. Well, that's that's a good idea then. And then also, if you, yeah. you might want to cushion like it underneath your arm. I'm going to try your way, Carvin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It does help a little. But except then you have to lift up off of that. You have to lift up off of the sponge ball. Yeah, but it helps me at least lift a little. Okay. Okay, now the next one we're gonna try and we're gonna stay on this side and try it is, uh, and this is probably harder actually. Um, you're going to put your top foot on uh, a chair. This is called, um, Joe Miller calls this um, Copenhagen plank. Copenhagen plank. I don't know why she calls it. I'm going to put mine on top of my Milo box, but you could put it on top of a chair. You could put it on top of two, two yoga bricks blocks if, if that's what you have, but everyone has a chair. So all you're gonna do now is you're gonna lift up. This, you might be not be able to stay up very long, you guys. Lift up. You can do anything you want with your arm, your top arm. Lift up and feel the work, feel the love, and then come on down. <laughs> Copenhagen um, plank, side plank. I don't know, tell me, is this easier or harder? Actually easier. Well, there you go. What about you, Parvin? I couldn't do it yet. <laughs> couldn't do it? Okay. I think it's easier. Yeah. Easier. Oh, because the, I did a tree. <laughs> no. is, is kind of supporting you in a way. So you don't have to stay up there very long, you guys. Just do two more of them, though, before we go to the other side. Oh, it's exhausting. If, if you can do two more, do two more. This is like Pilates. What? This is like Pilates. It's like Pilates? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Pilates thing like this. No bueno. No bueno? Is that what you said? It's hard. <laughs> it's good for you. It's so good for you because part of your lower back issue may be at the waist, at the QL. 
I don't have a lower back issue. Well, you don't have a lower back issue. Well, we're going to help you prevent getting one. <laughs> now, let's go to the other side. And so remember the first, first version, still a side plank, it's still a lot of similarities. I think actually you get more work at both sides of the QL on the second version, but your arm is down, remember, and you can put a ball underneath your hip if you want. Knees are bent a little bit, and then you're gonna lift up. And if you want to, you can bring your top leg up or you can bring your, just your top knee up, actually, if that's easier. You should feel this, especially on the bottom. You want to be sure that you're, you're, you kind of pulled your core in, compacted your core, and then lifted. And come on down, do one more, this version, and then we'll do the Copenhagen version. See, I have to have, on this side, I have to have some cushioning for my arm. Maybe that's because of my broken arm. Yeah, and I think I had trouble on the other side because of my shoulder. Yeah. Up. So feel like you've compacted your core before you lift up. And then come on down and do the Copenhagen version, which is on a chair or two blocks or something. Philo box. Put your top leg on the box and come on up. I think it is in some ways a little easier and maybe you can even feel that you're working both sides. Maybe we should skip the first one and go to the second one. Lower back. And just do a couple of those. And come on down, finish up, find your way onto your back, maybe with your, your bent knees on a, on a block or, I mean, not a block, on a chair or a phyllo box, like I have. I may not have a phyllo box. Finding something that's comfortable and warm and safe. As you know, I'm going to take you through some body parts, 61 body parts to be exact. And you're going to move your attention to each of the body parts. Don't move your body, just pay attention. Let me fix the speaker first. Starting with your breath, breathing in and breathing out. Watching the abdomen rise and fall. And now bring your attention and awareness to the center of your eyebrows, center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, 
fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, knee, ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. That completes your 61 point guided yoga nidra meditation. Bring yourself off the, off of the chair. Bring your knees off of the chair and your feet and your legs. Extend your legs. Instead, extend your legs along the mat and then extend your arms overhead and stretch and wiggle and right side, left side, trying to create a little bit more space between um, your rib cage and your pelvis. Maybe our practice today also created a little more space here. Everything from rib cage breathing to QL work to the Copenhagen slide plank. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Rotate your wrists and your ankles in one direction and then the other. Hug your right knee into your chest. And then your left. And then both knees. Hug both knees into your chest, Apanasana. Supine Apanasana, rocking from side to side. I guess now it's a rocking Apanasana. <laughs> and then whenever you're ready, just roll to one side, all the way to one side. And use your body, bottom arm as a pillow and use your left hand to bring yourself up to a seated position. Uh, unmute yourself, I'm gonna remove the spotlight. Put us into a gallery view on my end. Bring your hands to your heart. Press them together strongly. We didn't really do much shoulder work today, but maybe you can feel your scapula in the back of your upper body. Give it a little squeeze and a little hug. And then relax the prayer pose. Lift your skull, the base of your skull up away from your shoulders so that you can bow using your skull only, bow round, round over the top of the cervical spine. The skull bows, nods. And Notice 
Acknowledge and honor the light in each of us. And know that we are all one light. And we'll close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. 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 Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop the recording.